at the entrance of a Canaanite palace temple around 1000, 1500 BC, the base of evil. Up there is where the altar Moses built, or Joshua built when he came to the land. Sechem is right here, Canaanite palace temple, and Mount Gerizim is right up here. The Samaritans built their palace, or their temple, right here on the edge. Mount Gerizim, Sechem, and the temple, and evil. The valley in between, Mount Gerizim. The Samaritan Temple stood right here on the edge. John Harry, Harry, I care. John Arcanus tore it down. Fifteen minutes, have okay. fun. Mount Gerizim, the massive walls of Sechem. The city gate. So this is where Abram comes to in Sechem. When it says the, uh, the, the Oak of Mora, it's possible this is a holy site. Well, it is a holy site. It's a temple. It's a fortress. It's got a standing stone. It's Ebal and Mount Gerizim. It's where Joshua came after Moses told him to come here. This is where he came. So this most likely had a tree, a, a, a holy tree, a sacred tree, the tree of Mora by Sechem. This is the area that Abram comes to and would have passed through this valley between Mount Gerizim and Ebal. So that's all taking place there in chapter 12, verse 6. Now, just so you can see, I've got written down there uh, underneath that picture, Deuteronomy 11, verses 29 through 32. So this is on the other side of the Jordan. When Moses was over here, and I don't want to just ramble on and keep telling details, but when Moses was camped out, there's a good chance he was camped out at Sodom, right here. Sodom was a big city that had been ripped, laid waste. It was a flat spot. And this is the high place where Moses probably set up camp and was, they ended up leaving here and going across the Jordan. And that, that we can, uh, Dr. Graves and those guys talk about that. Uh, this would be, because you know, Sodom had been just wiped out and buried. But this place was a high place to look over the, the uh, disc right here uh, that led into the land. Anyway, at, from this point over here, Moses in Deuteronomy says this to the people right here. When the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are entering to take possession of it, you shall set the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Okay, so I got them turned around. Blessing on Mount Gerizim. Oh, yeah, no, I said it right. Mount, yeah, no, I said it backwards. Mount Gerizim is the blessing. Mount Ebal is the curse. Are they not beyond the Jordan? Now remember, Moses had never been there unless as an Egyptian he invaded the land or something, uh, but that's probably not the case. Uh, are they not beyond the Jordan, west of the road, towards the going down of the sun in the land of the Canaanites who live in the Arabah, opposite Gilgal, beside the Oak of Mora? So now in 14, this is 2000, we'll just say 2100 B.C. possibly. 
Uh, this is now Moses is speaking in 1406 BC. So you've got 700, 600 years later, that Oak of Mora is still being talked about by Moses. For you are to cross over the Jordan to go to take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you. And when you possess it and live in it, you shall be careful to do all the statutes and the rules that I am setting before you today. And so that's taking place uh, in 1406 B.C. And they're going to come and set up the same place at Sechem. It's just interesting. The first place that Abram goes is Sechem after he enters the land. And the first place Israel's to go after they defeat Jericho, get past Ai, is they go to Sechem to the same place, the tree of Morah. Probably you've got a photo of it right there as it's been built up. And once again, that's probably the retaining wall. That's not the wall of the temple. That's probably the retaining wall. And on top of that was all the pillars and the bricks and the mud clay uh, structures. Okay, chapter 12, verse 7. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So at that very place, at Sechem, at the mount, the Oak of Morah, right there at Sechem, God tells him, To your offspring I will give this land. And that's probably where he then builds an altar as a confirmation. Right here on that picture, he probably built some kind of an altar there probably beside other altars or holy places of the Canaanites, that's basically is a testimony, this is my land. And he doesn't stay, he just moves on. But then six, seven hundred years later, Joshua shows right up here again at the same place. It's like, this is where Abram set up the altar when God said, this is your land. He says, okay, I claim it, it's his. And now notice how long it took. It took six to seven hundred years for his descendants to get back there to claim the land. Now you do know what's going on. God is going to talk to Abram as this, this story goes. He's going to say, your descendants will go to Egypt. They'll be in there for four generations because the sin of the Amorites or the sin of the Canaanites is not yet full. He says, it's going to take four generations and they're going to be down there in the land. He says, they'll be there for 400 years while those four generations reach the place of the fourth, the curse of the fourth generation. And then he wipes them off and that's where they come in and they're going to reset the land. And you can just see God controlling history. When you look at this picture here on page three, it's called Baal Berith. In the book of Judges, it's called Baal Berith. In fact, one of the judges goes there and is trying to find fortress there. And as he's attacking it, that's where a, a woman pushes a millstone off the top of the wall and crushes it, break, kill, kills him. And David recounts that story. But that's in the book of Judges. It all takes place right here. So, Sechem. Uh, Sychar is, uh, is that how you spell it? Sychar? Is that how you spell it? In the New Testament, the, the woman at the well, Sechem, Sychar, the Samaritan woman, that was in this same, that's going to be a new name of the city right here.